I'd like to thank uh, Joe Branham, Mike Vaughn, uh, Senator Fanning, Representative Liggett for being here, and also Sheriff Dorsey. Thank y'all. Senator Gutson. He's on the back. Right? Senator Gutson. There you go. He's thank you. I'm sorry. You're not <laughs> <You're good. laughs> and I would also like to thank the governor for choosing us. Hey, hey. I'd like to speak here. Uh, here's Governor McMaster. Thank you. Yeah, hey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, beautiful day. We got a lot of information. I want to be sure that you get it all. I just want to say we're happy to be here. South Carolina is the best place in the world. Yeah, hey. Yeah, hey. Yeah, hey. Yeah, hey. <laughs> and I want some some of whatever Senator Fanning. <laughs> <laughs> We will bring it to you. So I, I do have some official words here, and we, we'll answer questions, and you'll hear from others to fill out the picture of what we're doing. But this is a, we're making a great step forward. As you remember, we had a group called Accelerate SC. There was a task force we put together that played a vital role in our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The task force was comprised of volunteers from virtually every sector of our state's economy, along with officials from the state, county, local agencies, and organizations. And we met a number of times in order to find our way through to get the facts and find our way to best respond to the pandemic. And I believe that we accomplished that. And the proof of that is evident around the country that South Carolina is doing so much better than other states where they took a, a different, different approach. Last year, the tax force, Accelerate SC, produced official recommendations and guidelines that allowed us to take that very targeted and limited measures to combat the spread of, of COVID-19 without shutting down our state's economy. And as you know, and now as people all over the world, particularly businesses looking to expand, no, South Carolina never closed down. We were among those that did not, and the results are dramatic and good. In addition, Accelerate SC conducted a thorough and complete review of the Federal Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, known as the CARES Act, for the purpose of providing expenditure recommendations to me as governor. Recently, the Accelerate SC Task Force, same one, just a few, few less people, conducted a similar review of the state's $2.4 billion share of what is called ARPA, which is the American Rescue Plan Act, and they gave me their expenditure recommendations. These funds, $2.4 billion, present us in South Carolina went with a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to make big, bold, and transformative investments. We're not going to waste this opportunity. We're not going to waste this money. We're going to put it where it'll do good for now and generations to come. So we must seize this moment and set our state on the proper course, a good course, a positive course for prosperity and success that will last for generations. So today I'm proposing that we invest $500 million, that's a half a billion dollars from the American Rescue Plan Act to transform our water, sewer, and stormwater infrastructure in rural South Carolina. Hey, hey. Uh, the, the ARPA law specifically identifies water, wastewater, and stormwater infrastructure as eligible activities on which to spend and invest this money. Our state's rural water, sewer, and stormwater infrastructure, as you know, is becoming old and outdated. In some places, it barely functions, but it's expensive. According to the Rural Infrastructure Authority, known as RIA, the average age of a water and sewer system in our state is 47 to 50 years old. Many of these systems have far exceeded their useful life. As the Accelerate SC Task Force reported, smaller water and sewer utilities, and particularly those in the less populated areas of our state, struggle, struggle to pay for improvements. 
And these improvements are those that would protect public health and the environment. The cost is significant and often beyond the reach of those trying to improve. In our state, there are 262 public community water utilities and 201 public community wastewater utilities, many of which are operated jointly throughout the state. Most are owned and operated by local governments or commissions of public works. Roughly one third of the water and sewer systems are owned by special purpose districts or authorities and 10% are owned by nonprofit corporations. The South Carolina Rural Infrastructure Authority, again known as RIA, was established wisely by the General Assembly in 2012. For what purpose? To assist communities with financing for water and wastewater infrastructure, as well as storm water drainage facilities. Since 2013, the RIA grant program has funded 49 excuse me, 419 infrastructure projects across the state, totaling more than $174 million, directly benefiting small and large communities in rural as well as some urban parts of the state. It's $174 million since 2013. The RIA will administer this additional $500 million in ARPA funds and will prioritize new infrastructure grants for water, sewer, and stormwater based on these following priorities. Number one, <clears throat> excuse me, economic development for poor or poorer counties. These counties are designated as tier three and tier four counties by the South Carolina Department of Revenue for the purpose of award awarding job tax credits to businesses who locate and invest in South Carolina. They've been doing these ratings for years. The job tax credit ratings are based on a county's unemployment rate and their per capita income. The poorer the county, the higher the dollar figure awarded per job tax credit for each job a business creates. There are 12 tier three counties and in our state and 12 tier four counties. And when I refer to poor, I'm talking about money and income and not the talents of the people. Amen. Amen. Water and sewer capacity is a critical factor when a business is deciding where to locate and where to make a significant investment. This leaves most rural counties with no real opportunity to bring jobs to their community because they cannot afford to upgrade or build a new water and sewer system to meet the capacity of a prospective business. And they are prospective businesses that would love to come to these areas if only they had this system. Second factor, public health. There are currently 161 water and wastewater systems operating under enforcement orders with the Department of Health and Environmental Control, which you know as DHEC. This means that DHEC has determined that that system is out of compliance with state regulations. Most of these communities, most of them, but not all, are in rural South Carolina and do not possess the resources or tax base to upgrade or replace their faltering water systems. Third factor, regionalization. Regionalization. Much like the efforts to consolidate school districts, which we have done over the years and some recently, in order to gain efficiencies, save money, and to improve the educational product a student is receiving, the state will financially incentivize large municipal water and sewer systems to connect to smaller and faltering water and sewer systems, while financially incentivizing the smaller systems to relinquish local control over their systems and revenue. It's worked in education, it will work in infrastructure. The RIA is currently conducting a survey of water, wastewater, and stormwater utilities to assess funding needs over the next five years. They have the capability and they do it and they're experts at it. While the information is still being collected, as of September, they had identified 1.15 billion in funding need for specific projects. So, ladies and gentlemen, in rural South Carolina, water and sewer is the key to life. Yeah, yeah. Just like yeah, yeah. oxygen. Yeah. It's the key to good health. 
It's key to economic health, and it's key to a community's health. The right water and sewer assets in a county, such as this one, can transform a tax base. That means good jobs, good schools, strong families, and a safe and vibrant community. And that means happiness and prosperity for all of our hey, people. Hey. Finally, with this investment of a half a billion dollars, that's $500 million into rural water, sewer, and stormwater infrastructure, we can ensure that South Carolina will have the workforce, the infrastructure, the intellectual capital, the environmental assets, and the quality of life necessary to complete, compete nationally and globally all across our state for jobs and investment for generations to come. Hey, hey. That's why we're here today. <laughs> okay. You like Great job. The Great senator job. likes it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, good afternoon. I'm Bonnie Ammons. I'm executive director of the South Carolina Rural Infrastructure Authority, and, and thank you, Governor McMaster. Uh, Senator Fanning, it's good to see you, to see and, you. and, and uh, Representative Ligon, and Senator um, Gustafson. Gustafson. Okay, Gustafson. for the state of South Carolina, Gustafson. There we go. Gustafson. Thank you, and I apologize. <laughs> Uh, I also would like to recognize that there are a number of Chester County Council uh, members here and uh, Mayor Montgomery and, and City Council uh, members as well. Our state is full of historic towns like Great Falls. These towns were the center of commerce and trade. Water and sewer infrastructure was built to serve the mill villages where workers lived and where businesses supplied necessary goods and services. Many of these mill villages are working toward revitalization and transformation now, much like Great Falls is doing. But the infrastructure that supported these historic villages has become old and outdated and is no longer functioning at capacity. To continue to provide the critical services that people need, such infrastructure needs to be modernized and upgraded to meet today's standards but replacement is expensive and it will require substantial investments. Today's announcement by the governor stands to be transformational for small towns and in all corners of our state. To provide safe drinking water and sanitary sewer, capital improvements are needed. We must invest in replacements and renewals, but also in new technologies that will protect health as well as our natural resources. Water and sewer services are often taken for granted. We can turn on the faucet, we can flush our toilets, and we often forget that hardworking men and women are behind the scenes ensuring that such services can meet the highest quality standards while still protecting our environment. Supporting aging infrastructure is particularly pressing in our rural and small communities where such infrastructure maintenance has become an overwhelming expense. Repairs are constantly needed and sometimes there are boil water notices that are necessary. In these areas, partnerships with other nearby utility providers can indeed provide an alternative that could help cut costs while continuing to ensure reliable and affordable services. This type of problem solving is important when the cost of providing services leaves little reserves for capital improvements. And as the governor mentioned, this funding could potentially help support regional partnerships. Our state and especially our rural areas are blessed with an abundance of fine people and natural resources that contribute to a high quality of life. Such amenities are what are bringing more residents and businesses to South Carolina every day. Water and sewer is the basic building blocks of a community. They're not a luxury, they're a necessity. Businesses need reliable and affordable water and sewer to operate but they're not gonna wait for those services to become available sometime in the future. So to prepare for those opportunities, it's imperative that we get our communities ready. 
to attract new companies and to allow our existing companies to grow and to expand. By making targeted investments designed to increase infrastructure capacity, we're providing people with the services they need while preparing our communities for new economic opportunities in the future. Simply, such investments will help to strengthen communities and put them in a position to succeed. Thank you, and I believe Todd will come. Yeah. Good afternoon, I'm Todd Glover. I'm the Executive Director of the Municipal Association of South Carolina. I'm pleased to be here today to just, uh, talk about this historic investment into water, stormwater and sewer infrastructure in South Carolina. The Municipal Association, we realize that we have aging infrastructure across South Carolina, but we also realize that the cost of rehabilitation of these systems a lot of times outpaces the ability of the ratepayers in these cities and towns to be able to afford to pay for the repairs. So access to this, these types of funds can be transformational to cities and towns across our state. We also know that investment in sewer and wastewater protects our environment in South Carolina. And as a tourism-based state, it's important that we protect our environment. And last but not least, we know at the association that investment of water and wastewater capabilities is pure economic development. A lot of times we forget about water and wastewater because it's underground, but water and wastewater infrastructure is as important to economic development as roads and workforce. I've been in local government for over 25 years. And Governor, I can say not once in my career have I ever tried to recruit a business or industry into my town to locate on a septic tank. <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> so this could be transformational. We know that a lot of our cities and towns, they may try to access these funds to rehabilitate their systems, but we also know that they may access these funds to install new water and wastewater infrastructure that for the first time may allow them to attract business and industries to their areas. That is truly transformational. And so at the end of the day, when you look at this proposal and it addresses health, safety, the environment, and economic vitality, uh, we are certainly happy to, uh, we think in one fell swoop that, in, that, in, um, that, that is a, certainly a great day for South Carolina. So thank you very much. Hey, hey. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Myra Reese. I'm the Environmental Director for South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. It's a great day in South Carolina, and great things are happening in Great Falls. Amen. So, uh, Amen. Uh, Amen. so you're going to continue to hear this message about transformation, and I just wanted to offer a few remarks from my perspective. Certainly not unique to South Carolina, small drinking water and wastewater systems located in rural communities across the country are often facing the greatest challenges. And two that I can speak to directly are the challenge of really taking on the huge job and responsibility of ensuring that drinking water that is delivered to faucets in your homes, your schools, your businesses are meeting all the necessary state and federal requirements and the wastewater is treated and responsibly returned to the environment, all while in many cases operating an aging system with more pipes per customer than a larger system and having a smaller customer base from which to collect revenue, resulting in less funds for much needed repair and replacement of aging infrastructure. In our experience, rural systems have often relied on short-term fixes for long-term problems to meet the regulatory requirements and maintain water quality. This observation led us to establish an Office of Rural Water back at DHEC in 2016, which is in essence the way I describe it, it's a dedicated swim lane for our rural water systems. This office consists of a team of folks who are very highly skilled and dedicated, who offer services beyond the traditional approach of repetitive enforcement. 
and they offer things like providing enhanced technical compliance assistance, bringing other partners to the table to collaborate, roll up our sleeves, and explore some very innovative long-term solutions with the end goal of more, of, of really building more resilient and sustainable water systems in South Carolina. And we do this in very close partnership with my friend Bonnie and the South Carolina Rural Infrastructure Authority. So this is exactly why the governor's announcement today is significant. This funding will provide a boost to the rural systems and communities that have needs. It will go a long way towards helping systems address the longer term issues caused by lack of resources for preventive maintenance and infrastructure investment. I'll wrap up by saying two things. One is critical investments in rural infrastructure is not just about building new pipes, new well pumps, and new lift stations. This funding will also ultimately lead to improvements in the health and environment of our rural communities, along with economic prosperity and revitalization. And we stand ready, along with the governor, Bonnie and her team at the South Carolina Rural Infrastructure Authority, my friend Todd with the Municipal Association, to provide the necessary approvals, technical assistance, and support to ensure that the funding is directed toward our rural systems, results in real benefits and improvements. So thank you. Hey, hey, thank you. Okay. Well, we'd be glad to ask questions just as, as listening to these very dedicated and informed people speak, we understand that we, we have a great opportunity. It's like we have a clean slate to do it just right, to build it just right. Amen. And it is really gonna produce results for, for our people. Are there any questions for anyone? Yes. So yes. There's some the good question, we're considering that, but some of these communities uh, just don't have the money. So the, it's likely that it will not be matches required. And, and your own task force said that it, there should be a $10 million cap for grants. Do you agree with that? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all the senior <laughs> correspondent <laughs> has to ask? <laughs> No, ma'am. That's 500 million for what we just described. Questions? Definitely. Got a lot of people here can answer when, them too. When will, <laughs> when will municipalities and towns and, and, uh, water, and water entities be able to start accessing these funds or be able to start applying for these funds? Well, I'm sure they already have, have a lot of plans, but uh, the legislature, the General Assembly, of course, will, will have to uh, make that appropriation. Would anyone like to comment? Mm -hmm. Further comment? Say something. I, I would say that, that, yes, that you're, well, you're exactly right. You see that? The governor's yes. always right. Yeah, that's right. Good answer, good answer, good answer. Uh, the, 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 certainly the General Assembly will need to, uh, to act on, on these funds as well, but uh, if uh, the funds uh, come to our agency as proposed, uh, we're prepared to uh, put them uh, to work uh, as quickly as possible, and we think we can uh, 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 wrap up or um, ramp up very quickly to make that happen. Thank you. Uh, well, certainly, uh, it protects the environment and makes sure that. Uh, these uh, water and sewer system uh, can meet the regulatory standards that are required today. And uh, a lot of the time, it's just the fact that those systems are very old and outdated and they need to be modernized and, and new technology provided. Moses, at the time, he crossed the Jordan. No, but <laughs> but to, to the point, uh, uh, Great Falls is a perfect example of what was just described, is we've got capacity here in Great Falls, do we not? Yes. And, and, and it is a, a wonderful system that was a part of the textile industry when it came in, and so we have a fantastic system. 
and it could handle the capacity needs we have. Many people don't know, but we, the governor, thanks to him and his leadership, we were able to get Gallo to South Carolina. Once we got that bill through, and we appreciate the governor's help on that, we still had one little stumbling block, and guess what it was? It was sewer. And that sewer question could have killed the whole deal even after the governor helped us get it passed in the Senate. Um, and yet, Great Falls is sitting here with capacity more than we can do. But to the question that was asked earlier, it is an older system. It needs some repairs. It needs some upgrades. This would provide that lifeline support for us so that the next time this happens, we will have extra capacity, whereas what we've been able to work out now is, is thanks to county council and, and others, we have been able to, to fix the capacity that we currently have to handle Gallo, but nothing more. This will provide us the opportunity to modernize our Great Falls system uh, to be able to have capacity for the next big thing, Councilman uh, Smith, would, would it not, that happens down the road. We have a, thanks to, to the governor's leadership, we have a whitewater rafting center, a new state park, a thread trail, all will open in Great Falls within the next 16 to 18 months. That's going to bring new businesses. That's going to bring people here. But we can't do any of that if we don't have, if we got Porta Johns lying in place. And so we're going to need this infrastructure in place that the governor is here talking about today. And we're the example of that tier four county, the poor rural county, uh, that we've been able to bring, not just uh, that, but thanks to, to the governor's leadership, GT Tire, Roseburg, we've been able to do some amazing things, but we need that infrastructure place to sustain that growth over time. Speaking of Gallo, does the incentive to bring Gallo require infrastructure work? No, no, you just can't open a plant without having a place to flush a toilet. So there was, there was, no, there was not a part of any incentive deal to get it here. It was literally just having capacity so that, that we could flush a toilet and it would go somewhere. <laughs> And, and I, it sounds like I'm making a joke, but I'm being as serious as I can. And I appreciate the governor. Governor has said when he thinks of waste, he thinks of me. And so I appreciate you letting me take that question. <laughs> I, I do. I do. Um, hi, I'm Senator Penry Gustafson, and I represent rural South Carolina. I represent Kershaw, Lancaster, and Chesterfield. And I just want to say for people who, who may not know about the needs of the deep rural South Carolina. There is no way we can match dollar for dollar what the more populated areas of South Carolina can do for their citizens. We do not have the tax base. We will never have enough money to match the funds. Not where I'm from. Chesterville County right now is working on a huge road project. It's been going on for years. Uh, Highway 9 hasn't been touched, and that's a different infrastructure. But, you know, for 40 years. And they're just trying to raise enough money for the match. And it's going on for years now. This money is a godsend to rural South Carolina. And everybody in the state is going to benefit. Because when people go to rural South Carolina, that's the middle of South Carolina, right? That means they're going all around the edges, too. They're going to upstate. They're going to the coast. They're going all over. Um, so on behalf of rural South Carolina and all the people who need better sewer and more capacity, like we do in Kershaw County, desperately, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, let's get it going, and let's use every dollar, stretch it to the best of its ability. And I hope the public will uh, support this effort. Uh, I know I will be voting for it in the General Assembly. Thank you. Governor, thank you for coming. Welcome to Chester County. I'm Randy Ligon, member of the House, and uh, privileged to represent this part of my home territory. I grew up nearby. But, Governor, I want to say, you know, Chester County has about 50 miles of river. We're, we're bordered by rivers on the east and the west. We're going to see a lot of activity just right on the other side of this building. We're going to see uh, activity uh, with the Whitewater Center and, and the park and, and all that. But, you know, infrastructure is needed all over South Carolina. I work in the real estate business, and I'm, in, I'm, I'm down in your area in, in Chesterfield. And, uh, county uh, a little bit and I can tell you it is it stops a deal quicker than anything uh, Todd as you said uh, n nobody comes to look at your your septic tank system uh, that that's not right and I'm I'm old enough to remember when Richburg and the success of of I-77 and Richburg really started and the reason it's there is there was that one sewer pipe down to Manetta Mills and that's where it got started. 
and now to think now we have miles of sewer pipe here that just needs some repairs. So anyway, but I can also say as part of the legislature, we will vet this carefully and we will make sure that we don't waste the money as the governor has, has said, we don't want to waste any money. Certainly not. So appreciate y'all coming out. Any more questions for anyone? One more. Well, part of our effort to make uh, South Carolina even a greater place to live, work, and raise a family is we have to be careful with those things. Myra, would you like to address that? And I appreciate the comment, and I think you, you really touch on an issue that a lot of people are thinking right now. You know, as, as, sci as we understand more about the science and how, it, how things impact the environment, we have a lot of issues that are, are emerging. And so that's why it's so important for us not to be just looking at the situation in front of us, but looking forward to how we can meet those emerging issues. Investing in infrastructure will modernize those systems and allow us not to have to struggle so much with these emerging issues. So um, I hear you loud and clear and yes, sir. Right, right. Well, I can't speak to this specific thing, but I, you know, wanted to see if anybody. I'm not familiar with the. You are correct. Okay. So okay. The, the sewer treatment plant that's located here will continue to be there, or do you any plans of doing anything across? Maybe in we we are, we are not that far along the line. Yeah. We're excited about the possibilities of reshaping and redoing yeah. what we're doing in Great Falls, but we yeah. haven't got to that point yet. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, we've had, what, 146 million since 2013. This is half a billion, right. uh, if I got those figures right. It, I, you know, it depends on the projects that are submitted uh, to be considered for funding. Uh, there may be projects that are a million dollars. There may be projects that are $10 million. So it, it will depend, uh, y you know, on what, it, what the applications are, what the projects are, how much they cost. Uh, but we would expect to be able to assist uh, quite a number of, of people with the, these funds. There, there'll be a lot of communication, collaboration, and cooperation, and I think you might need some help, some more people on the staff. To thank help, you. Y'all, <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate you doing hey. that.